Hello, I'm Sean Hoddy and welcome to another edition of Community Lockdown Aikido Martial Arts. Today is the 10th of May and the English government are making a statement today about um, the actions they're taking for step three. So hopefully we'll be in our dojo after the 17th of May. Okay, so now we start with a little warm up. So, Ichi Sanchi, go rock, sit, chudge, Ichi Sanchi, go rock, sit, chudge, hips going. Ichi Sanchi, go rock, sit, chudge, Ichi Sanchi, go rock, sit, chudge, and we stretch. Ichi Sanchi, go rock, sit, chudge, ni ni Sanchi, go rock. Sit, hutch, rotate, itch, knee, song, she, go, rock, sit, hutch, knee, knee, song, she, go, rock, sit, hutch, to the side, itch, knee, song, she, go, rock, sit, hutch, knee, knee, song, she, go, rock, sit, Hutch, stretching, itch, knee, sun, she, go, rook, sit, hutch, knee, knee, sun, she, go, rook, sit, hutch. From here, knees, itch, knee, sun, she, rook, sit, hutch, knee, knee, sun, she, rook, sit, hutch. Now our waists, keeping our head still, itch, knee, sun, she, go, Rock sit hutch the other way. Ni ni sun she go rock sit hutch. Good wiggle those fingers, thumbs. Moving around, just loosen those wrists. So we just apply koto washi, koto gash. So we loosen those wrists up now, call to gash, tenkai kotaneri, and tenkai kotaneri. Another little shake, shoulders, so backward and forward, so we go backward, rotating, and then we come forward, and then backward, forward, and then we rotate our arms, and then we come forward, and we rotate back, and now we're going to stretch. So we push, and we stretch. <clears throat> and we come down, and we stretch again. Really push, and down, and stretch again. Good. Right foot in front of left. Turn the right foot slightly toe in. Left heel down to the floor, or the mat if you're on a mat and just stretch. And you should feel that pulling your calf muscle or stretching your calf muscle and your Achilles tendon. And from here we change. So from here we stretch. Good, then we do hamstrings. So heel on the floor, reach down, leg straight, reach down. And go to the soles of the feet if you can, if or if not, go to the ankles or even higher. Go as far as you can go. Just push yourself beyond that limit. Just stretch. And we change the other side. So from here, we stretch. And from here, stretching the shoulders. So we're above the shoulder joint or the elbow joint. And we just stretch. And from here, down the centre of the back. The other hand down the centre of the back. And then from here, we stretch. In this position, we look down. Itch, knee, sun, she, go, rook, sit, hutch, knee, knee, sun, she, go, Rook, sit, hutch, 
itch, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. Now, under normal circumstances, if we were operating within a dojo or we had a matted area, after the warm up, we'd be doing our ukemi, which is break falls. So, because we're doing a fry martial art, we have to study how to fall over safely. And actually, personally, I think falling over is a skill that everyone should learn because it saves injuries. Most people, when they fall, they naturally put their arms out to protect themselves, where realistically, you don't want to be doing that because you can be popping the shoulder. So, once we've done our break falls, or you can be, we go into Unsuku and Tandoku Undu. So, we start with Unsuku. So, Unsuku is foot movements and we start with the left side we do these slow because we've got um, new people signing up to join our dojo so we do these slow so we start with the left side and we move forward each knee sun sheet go rock sit hutch then we move sideways we move to the left side again so it's each knee sun she, go, rock, sit, punch. So you have to excuse the bang because my floor, because it's a laminate floor, moves slightly. And now we move into each corner. So if you can imagine we've got a cross on the floor, I'm moving to the front corners first. So it's each, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, Hutch. So I've managed to get into each areas of that cross. Two forward, two back. And they're the primary movements that we use in Aikido. So from here we go into Tandoku Undu, which is hand and foot movements. And again, these are nice, big, purposeful movements. So we'd start. Itch, ni, sun. She, go, rock, sit, hutch, then we repeat. Knee, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. Second movement. Each, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. Knee, knee, sun, she, go, rock. Sit, hutch, itch, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. So this is the third one. Knee, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. Fourth move. Itch, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch, knee, knee. Sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch, itch, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. This is the fifth move. Knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, hutch. <coughs> So, as some of you are, you're going to be new to our dojo. Um, before we start, try and just get used to warming up and getting your wrists flexed. And practice unsuku. Just get that unsuku movement so you're moving around and practicing. Okay, so now we're just going to practice um, some sword cuts. So in our system of Aikido, Tamiki Aikido, also called Shodokan Aikido, um, we use a Bokken or Bokdo. So this is a wooden sword, so it's a replica of a katana, it's a practice sword. So the parts of the sword, Kisaki, which is the tip, Tasuba, guard, and scar, 
which is the handle. So when we hold the sword, it's held fairly relaxed, so we hold it as though we're holding eggs. A little bit of flesh showing at the end of the hand. This, the right hand then is near the guard. And the tip is at what we call chew down level, so middle level. So we're not up high, we're not down low, we're here. So we're aiming their chest height. This is how we'd stand. So when we start with the sword, so we come onto the mat holding the sword. This is passive because the sword is down. To make it active, finger comes onto the guard, onto the tsuba. Right hand goes onto the scar, come out, and then we come into position. And when we finish doing our techniques, from here, we'd step forward, and then down, and we'd ray. So this is the basic way to hold a sword. As I said, if we hold a sword as though we're holding eggs, so we don't hold it so firm that we're tense and we can't move this. On the other hand, it's not so loose that it just falls out of our hand. We want it so it can just move around. So if we've got to block, we can turn and use the flat of the blade and have the full potential of our arms being straight for the block because this is the area we'll be blocking with, not the tip because that's going to rattle and hit you. So that'll be there, this area here, so we'll be pushing in. And if your arms are straight, they're solid. If we've got our arms like this and we're trying to block, it's just going to crack into us. So, solid. So, because I'm indoors, I haven't got ceiling height. So, what we're going to do, we're going to practice some sword cuts. So, we hold this exactly the same. Then from here, I'm going to practice what we call men cut, and then a doe cut. So, I'm going forward men, which is head. So, itch, and we come back. We go into doe cut, which is body height as we retreat. Ni, sa, shi, go, rock, sech, hach, di, ni, sa, shi, go, rock, sech, hach, itch, ni, sa, shi, go, rock, sech, hach, ni, ni, sa, shi, go, Rock, sitch, hutch, itch, knee, sump, sheep, go, rock, sitch, hutch, knee, knee, sump, sheep, go, rock, sitch, hutch, yamai. So from here, again we finish and we ride. So with those cuts, men, so we're coming up, men, head fire. And from here we're coming back, bow. So when we cut, we look at the feet position as well. We don't want to be here, turning our hips. We want to be there, itch. Sun. Shit. And I'm coming up, I'm coming high. Not right the way here because you're exposed. So here, cutting. Obviously, as you get faster, your cuts will come further back. But if you're right back here, they take a long while to reach where we want them to be. So if we're there, our cut takes less time than this. It's a bit like a haymaker in boxing. If you do a big haymaker punch, 
you can see it, you know, your opponent can see it coming and it takes a long while rather than a quick jab. <clears throat> so now we're just going to practice a couple of movements moving out the way. So first movement, we're going to do what we call Hidari Men. So Hidari Men, we're moving to the right side. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put two techniques together with this one as well. So this is purely aimed at beginners Aikido and until such time that we can actually practice full contact Aikido we're going to have to practice for adult socially distancing so first movement we're coming up cutting offline so what's happening my opponent's cutting to my head so they're going to do a straight cut. I just come out of the way, cut them. They turn and face me, tip to tip, back in line. So the technique we're going to do from that is called Shomanati. So this time we'd be replicating this position. So rather than two swords being together, we've got two hand blades. So from here, as we come forward, we're moving, and then we're pushing. So shamanati. So the movement is roughly the same, but to get the drive for the throw, so as I come off line, if you can imagine there's their forearm here. So this is their right forearm. This comes up. My feet, if you look, my rear foot, just to show you, my rear foot is really close to my front foot. And the reason is, is because I drive off on my rear foot. My rear foot is the foot that propels me along. The front foot just slides across the tatami or the floor. So we're here, here, and then it's my rear foot that drives, drives for the throw. And this is going to be a throw. So from here, both right to right, so we're at practice position at the moment. So we're moving into meeting position, so we're coming in, meeting of the hand blades. As we meet, one, two, push. So this set is called shamati. Ati means attack. So we're attacking a vital point of balance rather than an attack to knock someone out. So from here, this comes up. As I move, coming off line to here. And then I'm going between their legs with my right foot. But I'm driving off, pushing off with my rear foot, my left foot. And this is the position I end up in. So this is pushing their forearm, pushing equally with both hands. And the technique is central and it's in front of me. So we do that one again. So from here, as they attack or we meet, so in kata we meet. In tanto rendering no kata, there'd be a strike, or in freestyle, there'd be a strike. But for this point at the moment, we make out we're meeting, so we're coming into the meeting position. One, two, push. So that's called shamati. Finish in a good upright posture. Shouldn't have a leg in the air. We should be balanced. Because if you miss the throw, they may counter with something. So you want to be nicely balanced, nicely upright. So we're ready to counter if need be. Okay, going back to the sword work. So we've done Hidari Men. So now we're going to do Migi Men. So Miggy Men, we're moving to the left side, still leading with the right hand. So we always lead with the right hand when we use Katana or Bokken or Bokdo. So from here, they're going to cut. I move forward and I move to the left side. Now, I'm watching them. So this is cut to their left side of their head. They move out, 
tip to tip, I change my feet, I come out. So once again, so we are moving forward, they cut. Change our feet, then we move out, and we go back. So, show that again. So as, I, as we move, we'll cut there. Change our feet, move around, back we go. So the technique we're going to do from there is called a gamiati. <clears throat> so with shamanati, when we push with shamanati, we go between their legs. So this right foot or right leg drives between their legs. With our gamiati, we're going outside of their legs. So if you can imagine they're standing there, I step up with my left, rotate the arm. So this is putting off balance. Their natural reaction is to try and regain balance. So as they regain balance, I help them. I push them on their way. So again, center line. So if you can imagine the hands here, elbow, I've rotated. And then from here, as I push, I push this one, this arm over. And what that does, that twists their body slightly. So from here, rotating, breaking the balance, they start to regain, and I push. So my right foot is going outside their right foot, and I'm pushing. And exactly the same as with Shamanati, it's my rear foot that does the work. So we're here, and I'm driving there, push. And if you look, I've got a slight angle I'm not just pushing straight in, breaking the balance, push. Yes, yeah, so I'm taking them at a slight angle, I'm throwing them, basically, I'm throwing the person like this, where a third leg would be if they had a leg. So it throws them off balance. No point throwing someone onto their strong legs. You need to take them where they're weak. So there or here. And this is what we're doing with this technique. So it's called a gamiati. As I explained before, center line. Very important technique, center. Technique in front of us, pushing that arm there. This one here, it's a dead center. If I turn my posture, if you look, my hands are my center line. If I come out, I'm using shoulder power. I want to be using hip power. In all Budo, we have Judo, Karate, Aikido, Kendo, hips. Hips are important. And center line. So, go through those two movements again. So, first movement, shamanati. And again, if you look, the center line. And the second movement, stepping up, rotating, pushing. Like gamiati. <clears throat> so, the next movement within the sword. Kata, it's called ski. So ski is a thrust. So with ski, what we'd be doing, we'd be moving forward there, coming up to cut. As I come up to cut, I drive forward. One, two, then from here, I'll be driving back, coming back out. So I'll come all the way back and you can see, and I'll shorten it. So from here, as we move forward, as I go to cut, I thrust, but it comes from the hip. I'm not overstretching there from the hip movement. Now 
Now, if you follow the teachings of Shodokan and the SAF, it'd be done slightly different. You'd be turning it over. Still in the same posture, but it's turned over into the thrust. Neither way is wrong. Both correct ways of doing it, just a slight different application of the same technique. So don't get into this prefix idea that oh, this way is right, this way is wrong. There are lots of variations of all of our techniques. Every instructor will do a technique slightly different to another person because of build. So if you're six foot five, you're going to do techniques different to the way I do things. <clears throat> so from that ski now, we're going to do a technique called Gaiku Agamiati. So this is reverse facing posture attack. And the key with this technique is to be very soft. So we're meeting, what I'm doing now, my little finger is just hooking over and I'm catching this part of the wrist. But I'm not yanking because if you yank, you're just going to get a firm reaction. So from here, I throw it. So if you look, as I'm moving, I'm coming offline, I'm catching. And it's just a gentle, basically, letting the arm drop. It's not forceful. So catching, letting the arm drop. From here now, as I step, I ensure that this hand stays here. So I'm keeping that stretch on. That stops my partner from being able to step back. So from here, by keeping that pressure on, they can't step back. And that gives me a split second to perform the technique. Because if they can step back, they're going to step out of the throw. <clears throat> so from here, we're just moving from here and we're throwing. And again, it's about becoming low and then in and up we go. But I'm maintaining that stretch. <clears throat> So once again, so we're right to right, catching, just letting that arm drop, the weight of my arm dropping really. So I'm not forcefully trying to, just letting the weight of my arm drop from here, and then we throw. So first three techniques, so first movement, shamanati. Second movement, Agamiati. Third movement, Gaiku Agami. Fourth movement um, relates to Gaiku Agami, so this is where the Randori no Kata comes in because we're, we're actually Starting Gaiku Agami, they block. So from here, I use my hips, I throw their arm out, breaking their balance, dropping my weight, and then from here, throwing. <clears throat> so we're right to right, so we do this slowly. So right to right, here, striking. Now I turn this way using using my hips and I throw their arm out and what that does that makes my opponent do this so there so I throw their arm out breaking their balance keeping high or keeping my arm high and from here dropping my hips so this is called gay dan and gay dan means low so there's no point putting the, the arm here as we throw we need to be around the belt level. So one, two, hips dropping. So we're dropping nice and low, and from there, 
we drive through. So if you can imagine, let's just come back a little bit. If you can imagine their bodies here, the legs are there. I'm going through. You can just turn slightly to take them over that knee if you wish. In Rambino Kata, they should be falling directly backwards. We shouldn't be lifting over the knee. It should be a pure back break for. So the last technique within this set, the Atemi was a set, is called Yushiro Ati, so rear attack. And we need to turn our opponent. And the way we do this is we step up using our hips. So you can imagine I'm pushing into that elbow, using the hips to turn. Then from here, my left foot travels forward onto, his, onto their shoulders, and I'm throwing. So let's see if we can replicate an arm. So we're here, I'm pushing, and what that does is that breaks their balance. So this is what we want. We don't be stepping up to push, you step up using those hips. So Aikido comes from the hips. So we're stepping up hips, and then we're throwing, and it's the outside leg that leads. Very important that we do that with the outside leg. So from here, hips, and then we're moving outside leg. So techniques we covered. First one, Shomanati. Next one, Agamiati. Third one, Gaku Agami. Fourth one, Gaidan. Fifth one, Shirati. So that concludes my class. Now, if you are a beginner coming to our dojo, as I said, if you can practice the unsuku, just get used to moving around and some sword cuts. So you just get used to moving those legs. From there, we can build up to our basic techniques. Within the Randri no Kata, or Junanahon, there are 17 basic movements. Of course, there's lots more throws within Aikido, but there are 17 basic movements to structure you as a beginner. Now, if you like what we do, these videos are posted on Facebook. They're also posted on YouTube. So if you like what we do, subscribe to our YouTube page and give us some likes. And if you're watching on Facebook, give us some loves and likes as well. Okay, my name's Sean Hoddy. Our dojo is Essex Aikido Dojo Shoshinkan. We teach Tamiki Aikido. And we also teach Taiho Jutsu, which is a police arresting art. Okay, thank you very much.